Accounting, Intermediate Accounting, Financial Ratios, and Coverage and Creditors. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. The source for these videos is the Keysco and Wygant text and some videos related to the text for intermediate accounting from Wiley.com. We've mentioned in a few prior videos that uh, using financial data can be overwhelming. TMI, too much information, particularly with the internet and the ease of using computers. We get more data now for accounting and finance than we ever did in the past. The question is, how can we get that information that's meaningful so that people can make decisions? Particularly for the second bullet point, non-finance professionals. Most people running businesses are not accounting or finance people. They're plumbers, engineers, lawyers, running retail stores. They need to get information that's useful. And one way to describe it is if you were in an elevator with the CEO, the head of your firm, and he asked you, how was our financial performance in the last quarter? Could you in three or four sentences summarize how things were? That's what we mean by an elevator speech. Something that's short and concise enough that you could say it on an elevator to somebody and get your point across. So as we say at the top of this PowerPoint, one of the things we can do is get use financial ratios, which is what this video and the last three have been about, because ratios will show us trends, big picture trends that are going on in your business. I want to flip over to uh, Excel here, and as I've been using it for the last couple of videos, we have the Levi Jean Company financial statements. We have a balance sheet on the left. We have an income statement on the right. And at the bottom, we're going to talk about what I'll call creditor ratios. And when you think about creditor ratios, think about ratios that have to do with covering the amount of debt that your company's incurred. Debt to total assets. I always say when I'm teaching finance, there's two ways to raise money to run your business. One is to sell equity, which is ownership. The other way is to borrow money, which is debt. Debt to total assets says, of the total assets that I have to run my business, what percentage of those assets were raised at the very beginning by debt as opposed to issuing stock or equity? So here's our ratio, and if I click on it, you'll see that it's long-term liability, 70,000, numerator, that's our debt, denominator assets, 425,000. So about 16% of the assets that we have, we acquired, if you can imagine, at the beginning of the company, through debt. Some companies carry a heavy de debt load if they have predictable earnings and interest like a utility company because it's reliable and people are willing to loan them money because they know they have the, the interest and principal payments aren't going to be a problem because they have good cash flow. Everybody pays their utility bills. On the other hand, a company like a Microsoft or a startup tech company may issue all stock, all ownership, and no debt because they have no predictable earnings or dividends. Book value per common share is the second one. And what we're going to do is take the equity, that value of the company that's left, assets minus liabilities, and we're going to divide that by the number of shares that are outstanding. Now, this applies to just common stock. So you, as you can see in note one, I'm throwing preferred dividends out of the equation. We'll talk about that on subsequent videos. And also, we would look at weighted average shares outstanding. Shares at the beginning of the year versus end of the year divided by two. In this case... We have equity of 260,000, and we have common shares of 20,000. So our value, our real value per share is $13 a share. Now, if you were going to buy the stock, you'd want to buy the stock at a price as close to book value as you could, because that's really the true value of a share. The last ratio is times interest earned, and what this question answers is, of the money that I make in a given month, how much of it's going to interest? And in this case, we're going to look at income before interest and taxes. 
which is my 7,000. We're ignoring, um, we'd actually add that back. We would take 7,000 plus adding back the $300 in interest. So let me correct that. It's going to be 7,000 plus we're going to add back the interest expense, so it's going to be $7,300 divided by the interest expense itself right here, which is 300. So you can see our ratio goes up a little bit. It's 24 times. And the question that's answered there is, of the money that I make each month, how much of that is going to go toward interest expense? The higher the multiple, the better. This company makes 24 times the amount of money that it has to pay in interest for this particular month. I'm going to resume the discussion by uh, going back to Excel. So now I'm back at Excel and I'm going to click on the next slide, which really uh, gives a summary of the ratios we've talked about all on these last four videos. The one at the bottom is coverage for creditors. So in other words, are you covering your interest payments if you're a, if you're a debtor and paying creditors? or if you're issuing stock, how much equity is being generated per share? That's really what we talked about in this last bullet point, coverage creditors. I'm going to wrap up by talking about some definitions. Debt to total assets is assets obtained by borrowing as opposed to assets obtained by issuing stock or equity. Book value, true value in quotes per share. And finally, timed interest earned, the portion of profit that goes to paying your interest expense. That's the end of part 11, our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. We're starting something new, small group live chats, the first Saturday of every month. We will do uh, live chat groups of no more than 10 people. It will be fairly inexpensive. You can pay it through PayPal. Um, on topics that I'm asked about and that I see people interested in on YouTube, for one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat, stltest.net is my website. Here's my email and my phone number, and we will see you next time.